Hey, everybody. It's Rick Yuzzi uh, here with Carlos Bustamante. And we're finishing up our series on DOCSIS Proactive Network Maintenance. And today we're going to be talking about uh, two types of tools. We've got proactive maintenance tools, and then we've got tools that I guess we now would call reactive, now that we've got or, a pro proactive or, tool. Or, or corrective. Or corrective. That's a good way to put it. Because um, there's two different reasons to have those tools. And as we're going to see today, you see different data in those two things. So um, trying to do something with one type of tool might be trying to hammer and a nail with a screwdriver sometimes. You know, I mean, they can right. both be used together, but you want to use the correct tool if possible to, to do the correct thing. So um, let me just mention that uh, if you'd like this video when we're done here, you can go ahead and click the like button. Please do that. Uh, click the subscribe if you're not already subscribed to us. And uh, if you subscribe, you can ring the little bell next to it, and then you'll get notified every time that we are live with a video. So uh, please go ahead and do that. So. Um, anything else we want to say before we uh, go into more explanation? No, yeah. So, so as you were saying, so we've gone through, uh, I think, like six or seven episodes where we've taken uh, concepts, definition, components of what PNM is. And I th the idea for today is kind of pulling them all together w with a real uh, use case. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick up one random customer, uh, and we're going to look at the two two points of view. One of them is going to be, like uh, Rick said, a uh, looking at it through a traditional corrective maintenance type diagnostics platform, one that is pulling uh, the typical uh, RF statistics on one side, and we're going to see what that looks like. And then we're, then we're going to look at that same customer th through the eyes of a PNM platform. So that's the idea, to be able to uh, see what we see in both. Uh, and uh, drill in and mm -hmm. see what the, that customer tells us. Okay, let's take a let's take a look. So here we are, and this is our TrueVision application. So what are we looking at here? We see green, right? Right. So this is this is a cu uh, a, a customer uh, that is connected to uh, to a CMTS at this point. Uh, so this would be the per customer view. We're looking at one particular customer. The upper right area is kind of a Kind of blurred out to protect the identity of mm -hmm. the of the innocent, mm -hmm. <laughs> but what we're, get, we're there's a lot of stuff here. But let's go ahead and drill into one particular area. In thank you, mm -hmm. the area in the in the red box. So we see a bunch of green, mm -hmm. and green green's good. Yeah. So we see uh, just right off the bat, what are we seeing? We're seeing that the modem is uh, is bonded three upstream three upstream ports. That the SNR looks really nice. Transmit levels are looking good. Uh, we also see that same for the downstream, but since this is PNM and it's all about the upstream, mm -hmm. well, let's not worry about that. Now, in the uh, the lower right area, we see we circled that one customer uh, in the red uh, red circle there, and what we're seeing it's green. Mm -hmm. We're also seeing that the majority of its neighbors mm -hmm. are also green. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's a few reds, but these are. Um, so this is looking at it from a. This is not looking at it from a proactive. Cor you're right. So this right. is a, for a corrective maintenance. So this particular uh, view would probably be used by our friends in the call center. So mm -hmm. if a if a uh, if a customer's calling in, uh, they would you know query that person's account, MAC address, what have you, and go directly to this type of view where they're getting the the high level view. Mm -hmm. But Looking at it, it's all in the green. The likelihood is this cu end customer is not calling in, mm -hmm. right? So, but let's we pick this guy. So now let's kind of look. Let's move on to what our PNM platform will look at for the same uh, customer. Great. So, Go ahead. all right. So what we're seeing here, first of all, we are looking at at, uh, at uh, our PNM platform is called Pre Equalization Analyzer. In the upper right, you're seeing what we've called before the digital taps. Now, these digital taps are what are called the the post equalization. This is after uh, this is what the CMTS is seeing after it's uh, instructed its its child, the cable modem, to make certain tweaks. Everything is looking really nice, which is why the other view that you saw, everything was green and everybody's happy. Mm -hmm. But this is again. This is again from the PNM point of view. But this is after all the tweaks are made. Right. Now, now we're looking at the same map, but again from the PNM platform point of view. And what's different from this, right off the bat, is that one customer that was previously in the green in the corrective maintenance platform 
In the proactive network maintenance platform, it's in the red, which means that uh, one or some of the PNM metrics are above the thresholds uh, that that uh, Cable Labs has uh, recommended as best practices. So really, uh, regardless of the tool that they were looking at, whether they're looking at True Vision, uh, the corrective tool, or they're looking at Pre-Equalization Analyzer, the, react the proactive tool, the customer in, in both cases is probably not feeling the impact of that in this case. And that's right, that's right. Yeah. And so, let, let's, you're exactly correct. So this is kind of more on where the company, the cable operators, ha has to make a decision before they may make investments in a PNM platform. Do they want to be proactive? Do they want to start looking for issues for customers that are not yet calling in? Mm -hmm. And that, that's why, and it's good to stress not yet because this customer is not calling in, everything is green, mm -hmm. but at some point, uh, because things aren't getting better, Mm -hmm. uh, this will deteriorate, but right. if we can get to it way in advance, then we're actually resolving issues before they become problems. Right, so when we were looking at the True Vision application, we saw this person was green, but there were some reds around him, a couple here and there. So those people were already being impacted. Um, in this case, this guy eventually as well could turn red, and then he could be impacted from some kind of issue, whether it's a you know, connector on the edge of the house or a piece of bad cable, something agreed, like that. Agreed, agreed. Yeah. Before we move on to the next slide, uh, a couple of things, a couple of insights that I want to see from this side. So again, we're looking at this map from a PNM point of view, whereas before we saw everybody was green in the corrective maintenance. On this one, we only see this one customer that's in the red, and the other ones are primarily in the green, which mm -hmm. kind of gives me an idea that it's probably not an outside plant issue, because if it were an outside plant issue impacting uh, this fellow, then it probably, we would see at least his neighbors either in the yellow or potentially in the red. Mm -hmm. And then in a tool like this, um, the, he could have red people next to him, but they might not be correlated in the sense that it could be a, they could all be in-home problems. Correct. It, it's right. that, yeah, it's not as simple as just looking at, uh, at different colors on, on a map. There, we, based on the, the uh, episodes that we looked at before, putting them all together, there's a couple of things we have to do to be able to analyze before we, before mm -hmm. we get in the truck or if we have to get in the truck. Yeah. So there is, an, there is a feature in PNM tools, including a pre-equalization analyzer that will tell you if a group of modems are correlated, so they're probably being impacted by the same kind of thing. Right, yeah, and, and as, we, as we learned before, correlation groups are defined as those that have similar ICFR, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they, they're physically in the same, uh, off of the same upstream areas, mm -hmm. uh, that type of thing. Yeah. All right, so yeah, so the, this next slide that we're seeing here is, uh, from this map, we can do a, just a right click and get a, a high level snapshot of some, mm -hmm. some of the metrics uh, on the PM side for this one particular customer. And but if we want to drill in, mm -hmm. thanks. Mm -hmm. So now we're looking at statistics in particular to this one customer that, on the PM point of view, we've already seen it deemed that they are critical, they're in the red. Uh, in this red box here are some of the uh, metrics that we covered throughout the weeks. Uh, ICFR, we're seeing, well, first of all, what do we see? Again, this modem is using three bonded upstreams. We're seeing on the f uh, second to far right that uh, they're on 30, 33, and 37 megahertz, uh, each at 3.2 channel bandwidth. Now, going back into the red box, the ICFR, uh, it looks like it is uh, higher than the recommended 3 dB peak to valley and we'll, we'll go to that. The main tap compression, uh, we see those values. The MR level or the micro reflection level is, is pictured here. Uh, the group delay, which is recommended at 200 nanoseconds per megahertz, is listed here. And then we also have TDR. And mm -hmm. TDR, in, in the way this platform defines it, is near home or in home issues. Mm -hmm. But as a quick refresher, let's go, uh, let's go back, let's go to the next slide. Uh, on some of the thresholds that we had discussed in the past. So the MR level, uh, anything more positive or more closer to zero than uh, or greater than negative 18 is deemed in the red. Uh, we'll go back to the, to the page before, but each one of them were, I think were, be, were around negative 10, negative 11. So they're definitely, they have a micro reflection level that is, that is elevated. Mm -hmm. As far as group delay, uh, they're, I saw that at least two of these upstreams were uh, somewhat higher in, in the group delay uh, on, uh, on those. And as far as ICFR, again, 
recommended is to be less than 3 dB peak to valley. Uh, otherwise, if it's greater than that, there might it indicates near home or uh, in home issues. Mm -hmm. MTC, main tap compression, or again, you want to be less than 0 0.5, and all three of these were, were far below it. So that's, mm -hmm. so that's good. That's mm -hmm. a good sign. Mm -hmm. Main tap compression is, a, what is that, a ratio between the main tap and the other taps? And it, that's exactly right. It's a ratio between the energies of, uh, of the main tap as compared to the, the other, mm -hmm. other digital tabs. So now going back to this, w after that quick refresher, again, we see the ICFR is, uh, is somewhat out of uh, best practice, DOCSIS spec. MTC is, is, is actually pretty decent, but the micro reflection level is in the red and group delay, they're at least uh, 37 megahertz and uh, 30.6 megahertz seem to be the ones that have elevated group delay. Mm -hmm. And then we can, if we were to scroll down, we'd see uh, these charts. Right, so this is more of a visual representation of what we just looked at. Uh, on, the f on the upper left, we're seeing the ICFR for the three frequencies in question. And we are seeing some 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 wild swings into the reds for each one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, on the upper right, we're seeing the pre uh, EQ tap response. So the digital taps one through seven are the ones that will give you indication of group delay, and at least two of these frequencies uh, definitely are showing that nice stair step case. Uh, digital taps nine through twenty four being the ones that are indicators of micro reflection. Now, 9 and 10 uh, are the ones that are more near home or in home, which are the most elevated out of all of these. Mm -hmm. uh, and given the information we saw in the previous, where the VTDR, which in, uh, in our lingo here is the one that is more indicative to outside plant issues, the value was zero for each one of these frequencies. Right. So we're saying that what is causing this particular customer's modem to be uh, critical in the red is near home or in home issues. Mm -hmm. Now, as we look at the, the lower part of the screen, where we have a representation of, uh, of, their micro, of, of the echo cavities, uh, one at 85 feet and one at 104, those are probably, uh, again, they're these, mm -hmm. these shorter segments are more near home and in home, you would start from the, from the drop down to the home. And I noticed, uh, you can't really see it here, it's kind of covered up, but we had another smaller one, I think it's 70 something feet. Oh, is that right? Yeah, so there's actually okay. a third one on there and one of these uh, as well. Okay, so then, so we're seeing the, uh, this is the uh, pre-EQ chart that we're looking at, but again, we showed it a little bit earlier, but we can look at a post-EQ chart, uh, which is gonna sh basically show us what the CMTS is getting after, it's, after the cable modem has adjusted its equalizer. Absolutely, so after the CMTS is, has, inform the modem to make uh, certain adjustments. Uh, what you see in the upper right is what the CMTS sees. So essentially, uh, more as a summary of what we're getting out of all this is number one, pre-equalization is working, mm -hmm. right? We're seeing that, that independent of PNM, pre-equalization is working such that uh, this customer is being impacted and the customer is unaware. Mm -hmm. They're not calling in, as you saw in the corrective uh, diagnostics platform tool. They're in the green, so they're probably not calling in mm -hmm. at all. Uh, as far as on the PM side of the house, we're getting insights. We're looking under the covers and seeing where the issues are. Uh, we're seeing that it is more near home and in home. And so now when we're, uh, oh, and the third piece is this, is that to support the fact that it's not an outside plan issue, on the PNM point of view, we're seeing that none of this person's neighbors are. They're all green. So they're all green. Even from a PNM perspective, they're all green. So Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, one of the things that you see when you look at these two tools, again, is that uh, sometimes cable operators will use them incorrectly because they may look at a proactive tool once they get it and think that uh, if somebody's red, maybe they're having a problem, and they'll go out there and try to do corrective kinds of things uh, when. I, they just use them. They just use them the wrong way sometimes. Yeah. To your point is that, uh, and as you said in the beginning, different tools are made for different profiles of of, of staff. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. So whereas that one particular uh, view that we saw where we're looking just at one customer, again, it's probably going to be used by your support staff, mm -hmm. whereas these P&M views are, would be more for your uh, outside plant engineer, your field engineer, your maintenance Thanks, engineers. Yeah. Uh, so they're looking at the same environment, but but they're using the information differently mm -hmm. uh, to to be able to be successful at their jobs. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing that you mentioned, you know, that it's a decision that somebody has to make that, that they want to do this. And one thing that we've discovered is that um, it is a decision that uh, the operator needs to make, and they also need to once they do that, they need to kind of change the way they look at plant maintenance because quite often. The way they look at plant maintenance is reactive, but now they have a proactive tool. So they're used to customers calling in when their modem is red on the True Vision screen, the, the corrective product. Mm -hmm. The customer calls in, they go out, and then they realize they have to do some maintenance because they've got a problem versus being able to maybe, tac maybe tackle that in advance. So they have to change the way they look at plant maintenance, and they have to kind of change the, the way they do things. They have to, it helps if, if you have, if you're going to do PM, it helps if you have a p and expert, somebody that learns the tool, that understands how to use it, and understands maybe how to direct maintenance staff in the most efficient way. As an example, um, you may see that you've got that red customer we were just looking at, and you've got uh, your p and person who knows that a truck is going to be doing out, going out and doing an install in the same area, or maybe it's a maintenance, doing some maintenance in the same area, and they go, oh, we have somebody over here you can look at at the same time. And they would never do that without the p and tool because they wouldn't know there was a problem. Good point. So Absolutely. you've yeah, so you've really got to change kind of the way you do business on the maintenance side, and that's where the the savings really comes in because then you can reduce truck rolls because you're sending a truck to do a couple of different things at the same time and and handling those problems in advance, rather than as we said, it's eventually going to it's going to get bad in the future anyway, right? Then you're going to have a customer calling about it, and then you're going to be trying to find the problem. As right. Opposed it's to not like uh, fine wine. It's not going to get better. It's not going to get better. <laughs> stuff gets age. looser. Stuff gets more corroded. It all it all happens. And then right. and then you throw the temperature and the moisture in there, and it goes <laughs> goes haywire. So. Yeah. All right. Um, so uh, I don't know if we have any questions. Let's take a quick look. Uh, where would that be? Here it is. Uh, I don't see that we've got any questions coming up. Mm -hmm. And remember, whenever you're on live with us, you can always ask a question. We'll be happy to take those at the end of this time. Uh, remember that you can go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. So click, click the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. Uh, click the like button if you like this video, if it helped you. And uh, ring the bell if you'd like to be notified whenever we're live, whenever we post a video. Uh, I'll be here next week at the same time, so it'll be Tuesday at 3 o'clock. And next week I'm going to be talking with someone about the Internet of Things and how that's impacting cable operators and, and uh, telephone companies doing uh, fiber and those doing DOCSIS 3 and 1 and how they need more, you just basically need more bandwidth now with the Internet of Things. So we're going to talk a little bit about that next week. So, and it won't be Carlos. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it will be, I will have somebody else next week, so you are available for whatever you need to be doing awesome. next Tuesday awesome. at 3 o'clock. Oh, thanks for having me. Yeah, well, thanks a lot. And uh, thank you for uh, watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.